Since I was a little kid, my parents always told me, you know, when you perform, if it's in front of two people, 20 or 200, you know, or 2,000, you always go balls out, no matter if there's one person in the audience, you entertain the fuck out of that one person. You are tuned in to Cali Mic Check. I am your host, E. Rose. We traveled to Hollister, Cali to check out Sin Dog of Cypress Hill. Stay on that bombastic, rise me like elastic. Reach around the world, situation drastic. Heard some for one say I could never bring it. Hardcore hip hop, metal, and I sing it. What would you say is the one thing that escalated? Cypress Hill just from being a local independent underground group to just ridiculous height of stardom well you know I think there's a lot of things but I think um, insane in the brain really you know what I mean that song was not supposed to be a hit it was just supposed to be a like a warmer you know warmer upper song like letting people know Cypress is getting ready to come back out we're not gonna have a video to it this is just like a little boom get out there boom Cypress Hill's back you know, ain't going out like that. That was the song that we thought was supposed to be like, you know, this is the song that's gonna make this album platinum, you know what I mean? But we put that little insane thing out and two days later they called me up like, dude, we gotta do a video for this. I go, they tell me it's taking off all over the place. I go, that insane song? The day that we decided that we were going to be, you know, a, a pro, you know, marijuana activist hip hop band, I mean, and we put that into effect, I think immediately, you know, you know, with the, you know, with all the press and hype and that the label's putting out there, there's weed lovers from, you know what I mean, from 13 to 93, bro. You know what I mean? People smoke herb and once you stand up for them and say like, yes, we're here for you, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, you know what I mean? All of, they, you got their attention. A huge nation of followers. Yeah, and it's nothing. It's nothing that we did intentionally. Like we weren't like, like little goody two shoe motherfuckers. Like I was smoking weed since I was twelve, and we were like always fascinated by you know the cannabis hemp you know culture and all that. So it only made sense. And Muggs was the one that came up with the idea. Like you guys got to be like the teaching chong of hip hop. You know what I mean? We're looking for a gimmick the whole time, and you know the whole time literally it's right there under our noses. You know. Yeah. Now, um, your production, where do you get some of your production from? There's something to me that's just so alluring about finding that one kid that nobody knows or is rarely known, and he's got some heat, and, you know, he's he's willing to send that to me, like, will you please listen to my beats on Facebook or something, you know what I mean? And you'll find some, like, heat, man, like, because hip-hop is universal. Every culture in every country has a hip-hop section. So to be out there and to be able to connect with them over at something as simple as Facebook, Here's some like different beats from different cultures, from like Mediterranean hip hop to like South African hip hop, you know what I mean? To like, you know, German hip hop or whatever, man. It's like, dude, how can you not jump all over that, you know? Right. I've always wanted to act since I was a little, a, a little child. And uh, I've just, you know, now I'm just going for it, you know what I mean? So I want to get that out of my system. You know, however much of that is in me, I want to get it out of there and you know and try to do different things with my uh with my god-given ability you know to you know stand before people and you know be able to entertain them you know the baremo the wahiwa press everything we need i am a huge fan of biggie bang i forgot the title but dude i love that track can you tell me where how that came to be and um what's behind that biggie bang man we were doing it in the we made it in the studio and stuff and i had my brother there and I was like, dude, you got a hook for this? And he went in there and he laid the Biggie Bang hook. And I, I looked at him and I go, Biggie Bang? And he goes, yeah, bro, it's Biggie Bang. <laughs> like, you don't get it, nigga, it's Biggie Bang, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and the, basically the concept is, you know what I mean? If you're coming out of pocket, homeboy, it's Biggie Bang. Like, whatever you bring on me, it's gonna, mine's gonna be bigger. So you wanna bang on me, I'm a, big, I'm a bang binger on you, you know what I mean? I bring the Biggie Bang. <laughs> What 
what is your favorite piece of any art that you have been a part of that you've put out? What is your favorite? Well, man, fuck, dude. The, I mean, there's been a lot, you know what I mean? Uh, the SX10 stuff is all, you know, real special to me, man. You know what I mean? Uh, especially the album that never got released that re people have rarely heard. Um, you know, all that stuff was really special to me. But I think, you know, out of all the Cypress Hill songs, you know, the one song that definitely is, you know, special to me and I love performing it every night is Rock Superstar because, you know what I mean? I always, from the first album or whatever, when we were recording it, I could always hear Cypress, like, I could always hear us with some guitars on us or, like, you know, doing something crunchy like that, you know what I mean? And eventually, eventually we did it, man. And, you know, fuck, I was right. It slammed. Cypress Hill National Anthem. So Wow! I mean, fucking wow! Sin Dog just killed it in there. Entire place was erupting. It was madness. One of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Hollister. For Sin Dog and Hollister, I'm E. Rose, and y'all be watching Cali Mike Check. Old school, loco style. Uh. My homeboy told me, Papa told me, he goes, not many people understand the ways of the pachuco and the pachucada. And the pachucada, <laughs> always feed me, never sweaty, always with your clothes ironed, looking good, looking great. You know what I mean? It's just, it never, it never left me on. So every now and then I get on the stage and I just feel that old cholo, you know, come out of me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And I got to give it up. I don't see enough of that. Freshly creased. Yeah. Thank you, brother. My right pleasure. On, My pleasure, bro. Right on, bro. Thank you.